This is the horse that recently won the famous Grand National Steeplechase at Aintree, England. The name of the horse is Jay Trump. The name of the jockey is Tommy Smith. What is your name, please? My name is Tommy Smith. My name is Tommy Smith. My name is Tommy Smith. Only one of these men is the real Tommy Smith. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bob Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening, pal. Good evening, Bob. Bob. Oh, looking nice and frisky and rosy tonight. Frisky? Yes, frisky. I think so. <laughs> We're brought to you this evening by Aerowax with Jet Age Plastic for the tough, long-lasting shine that never yellows. All right, panel, you have in front of you your envelope containing the stories for tonight. Will you open up the first one and follow along with me? I, Tommy Smith, am an amateur jockey. In 1960, I bought a three-year-old horse named Jay Trump. Up to that time, Jay Trump had won only $220 in flat races. But there was something about him that I liked. I started riding him as a hunter and noticed that he jumped well. Four years later, Jay Trump, with me as jockey, won the American Triple Crown of Timber steel Steeplechase. Then, this past March 27th, I rode Jay Trump into racing history. He became the first American-bred, American-owned, and American-ridden horse to win the 126-year-old Grand National Steeplechase at Aintree, England. Signed, Tommy Smith. Panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Tommy Smith. Let's start this questioning with uh, Peggy Cat. Peggy? Thank you. Number three, who placed? Freddie. Thank you. Uh, number uh, two, did you buy this horse for yourself? No, I did not. Thank you. Number one, how much did you pay for the horse? $2,000. Thank you. Number three, how far from the finish line is Beecher's? Uh, Beecher's, you jump it twice. Thank you. But how far from the end of the race is the second Approximately jump? Approximately two miles. Thank you. Number two, how many horses fell down in that race? Uh, there were 47 entries, 14 finished. Thank you. And number one, what year did Sir Patty win the Grand National? Excuse me, would you... Sir Patty. What year did Sir Patty win the Grand National? No. You don't know? Uh, I see. Thank you. Um, number three, whom did you buy the horse for? Mrs. Mary C. Stevenson. Thank you. And uh, number two, uh, did your horse ever win the Maryland Hunt Cup? Yes, he did. Thank you. Peggy, how long have you been a racetrack? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, terrible. Number three, when, when you won, I, I seem to remember that it was not announced who owned the horse. Is that right, or am I remembering wrong? No, there was a lot of noise. I don't remember. <laughs> All right. Number one, uh... Why did you like this horse? He hadn't done too good. Was it was it something in his eyes? Did he look sweet, or why did you like him? Even though he well, I'd seen him working out and uh, ridden him myself, and uh, I liked the way he jumped. Number two, do you think he wasn't ridden properly up to that time? Is that why he didn't do better, or what? No, he was a flat horse up to that time. I and bought him as a jumper. I see. Uh, number three, uh, do you know the town of uh, Aintree, England? Well, did you get to know it at all? Did you spend much well, time? I was there for three days. The Kitty Carlisle. Number one, what is the height of the jumps at the Grand National? Well, the jumps vary at the Grand National anywhere from 4'10 to 5'3. Thank you. Number two, where is the Melton Mowbray? I'm afraid I don't know. Number three, where is the Beaver Hunt? Uh, I think it's somewhere in the north of England. Thank you. Number one, what is a Martingale? I'm afraid I do not know. What is a Farthingale, number two? <laughs> it's a coin, but I'm afraid I'm not too familiar with it. A coin? Mm hmm Number three, where are horses withers? Uh, underneath the pummel of the saddle. The Grand National uh, at Aintree is about to be made into a, um, uh, a housing development. Do you know who's doing that? Number one? Who is, who is selling the land? Yeah. Or, uh, Mrs. Mirabelle, I think. Thank you. Uh, number one, where are the horses withers? <laughs> number number two. Uh, the shoulder, the top of the shoulder. Thank you. Tom Poston. Thank you. Number one, how do they score... Uh, 
points for jumping in the Olympics. Do you know in the steeplechase in the cross country? Uh, no, I do not. Do you know number two? No, I haven't been riding in the Olympics. No, no, I know. I just want maybe. Do you know number three how they score? I don't know how they score the Olympics now. Oh. Uh, number three, did you hear Kitty's question about a farthingale? It doesn't make any sense to me at all. Do you know what a farthingale is, number one? No, I do not. Well, what's a martingale, number two? I don't know. Do you know number three? Yes, sir, it's a piece of tack. Uh, number three, do you know uh, how to repair, do you know anything about repairing a horse's hoof that is actually split? Could you repeat your question, please? There is a repair for a horse's hoof that is split. What's that called? Uh, sometimes they, uh... That's all the time we have, I'm sorry to say. Uh, but you'll have to walk with a limp for just a bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but in the meantime, mark your ballots, if you will. Mark them at once, without change and without any consultation. Simply vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for each and every incorrect vote. Are all ballots marked? Oh, swift on this one. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number three because I think it should be him even if it isn't. He was great on the question. Thank you, Chad. I voted for number three. Number two looks like a real jockey. <laughs> Horse and beef. I don't have a clue. I'm not a great sportsman myself. I voted for number two because he lied with such authority <laughs> that it's either him or he's a great liar and deserves to win, one or the other. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number three because he knew that the beaver is a hunt in the north of England, and he knew what a martingale is. A farthingale is a piece of Victorian ladies' clothing, and there was no reason why they should know. <laughs> All right, there we have it with a slightly split vote. Three for number three, one for number two. Let's go with that and find out which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is Tommy Smith. Will the real Tommy Smith please stand up? Ah! It must have been a very satisfying and as well as a very thrilling victory, Tommy. It was exhausting. <laughs> I bet it was. I bet it was. What was your time, the actual? Uh, nine minutes and 30 seconds. It's a long one, isn't it? Yes. What's the actual uh, uh, ground covered? Mileage or, or? Four miles, 856 yards. Boy, really was that right short. about that number two said about uh, 14 finishes out of a field of yeah. 47? That's true. The 33 fallers. I'm glad you weren't one of them. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My, I am Charles McKee, and I work in the credit analysis department of the First National City Bank. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, what is your real name and what do you do? Uh, my name is Frank Langley, and I'm director of special events for Macy's, the department store. Taking the score, we find there was one incorrect vote that you tripped the panel into, and that's worth $250, gentlemen. Uh, it was a great pleasure having you here with us tonight. Of course, on your way out, you'll also receive a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Aerowax. I hope you look back on this as a happy visit. We certainly do. We enjoyed it thoroughly. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> Let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Heidi Hoffman. My name is Heidi Hoffman. My name is Heidi Hoffman. Follow along with your copies of this one, if you will, panel. I, Heidi Hoffman, am an inspector for the United States Bureau of Customs. It is my job, along with the other 2,700 customs inspectors stationed on the docks and at the airports of major American cities, to collect duty on imports, enforce tariff laws, prevent smuggling, and spot any kind of deception or fraud. In an average year, we clear over 180 million travelers and collect almost $2 billion. Signed, Heidi Hoffman. These three young ladies all claim to be Heidi Hoffman. Let's start this cross-examination with uh, Orson Bean. Orson? 
Yes, uh, Miss uh, Hoffman, number one, if you see, uh, like, a red-faced tourist uh, with a fellow with a, you know, kind of a fat guy, say, with a uh, camera around his neck, and he looks nervous, do you assume that he may be hiding uh, something? He's smuggled in from France, say, or...? Yes. What? What do you... What do you do, then? You, you go through his luggage extra carefully? Yes. And if you find nothing, then what? I let him go. Oh, really? You don't look in his pockets or anything? If he has bulging pockets. All right. Number three, my dear, uh, how many guys have you confiscated stuff off of? About? Oh, about 85. Do you know, uh, number two, uh, how many people are apprehended in the course of a year? By that, I mean Americans coming home? I have no idea. Is it a lot? Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number two, um, are you allowed to bring foodstuffs into this country? No, they have to all be passed by the Department of Agriculture. Number three, are you allowed to bring any kind of vegetation in? No, if we take a sampling and it's uh, proven all right, then we can let it go through, but it takes a while. Thank you. Number one, what is the most suspicious thing a traveler can do? Now, I'm not going to Europe this year, but it's good for future information. <laughs> Mm, act overconfident. Number two, what do you look for in terms of suspicious things in luggage? Oh, uh, well, I, I remember once a person had extremely padded luggage, and after checking it with a pin, it turned out to uh, contain quite a bit of narcotics. Thank you. Number three? Oh. Tom Poston. Thank you. Number two, do you work with the, the, the Narcotics Bureau in uh, where you... Yes, we do. Who are they connected with in, your ca in this case? The what Department de of Treasury. Thank you. Number three, uh, what do you do with uh, w w finding out about false bottoms in luggage and so forth? What, uh, how, how do you know that there is a false bottom, or how do you know to look for one in the first place? Well, you really don't. It's strictly intuition. Is that and... so? Number one, what about diamonds? Do you have any foreknowledge sometimes that a particular passenger will have purchased diamonds elsewhere and be trying to bring them in if they don't declare them, you're on the lookout? Has that ever happened? Yes, there's Interpol uh, sends out lookout sheets on various stolen merchandise. Oh, what about bought merchandise, number two? Yes, often this is the case. We are uh, forewarned that they are coming through. Thank you. Peggy Cat. Number three, if somebody told somebody was coming in with something, do you, and you say, get a big diamond, how much reward does the squealer get? <laughs> <laughs> The informant. Well, I think that they don't. They pay. Don't they pay for that kind of information? No. Oh, they don't. She don't sell a TV programs lie. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. If I came in with a strand of pearls from Japan and I didn't declare them, and you knew I had them, could I pay the tariff then, and would you give them back to me? Oh yes. You wouldn't keep them just because I... No. Oh, no. I see. Uh, Number one. What's the pr what's the procedure for bringing in a foreign dog? Well, you have to. Uh, have processed the animal through quarantine in the foreign country, or he won't be allowed in. That's all we have time for. Time for you now to mark your ballots again. So mark them happily and correctly, if you can, of course, voting without any consultation whatsoever for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked. Okay, we'll find out how they voted then. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two. I, I don't know. She seemed to have a kindly attitude toward, toward the person who brought the pearls in. And, and I'm part crook at heart, I guess, because I look for a kindly attitude among customs inspectors. <laughs> Peggy Cass. Well, I voted for number two because I think if you buy a ring and then there's somebody squeals at you, they do get part of it back. They get the money, oh. mean things. I think two looks nice and honest and kind. Where are you stationed, my dear? I wish to go through that custom. Orange and Bean. I voted for number uh, three. She seemed genuinely outraged at the idea of the United States of America paying off squeal money. <laughs> so she got my vote. Kitty. I agree. I voted for number three. But number one, when she said the animal must be processed, sounded very legitimate. And number two said the Department of Treasury, and I don't think that's the way somebody familiar with it would say it. So I voted for number three. Very right, well, it's evenly split then. Two for number two, two for number three. All right, let's find out right now which one of these young ladies, in truth, is Heidi Hoffman. Will the real Heidi Hoffman please? <laughs> <laughs> She was so 
anxious to prove that they'd skunked you, she couldn't wait till I finished. <laughs> Oh, my, that was a good job of fooling right down the line. Number two, uh, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Linda Allen, and I'm a receptionist at Goodson Todman, the producer of the Sakoa Church. I believe Mr. Goodson is here in the audience tonight. Does he know what a good liar you are? Well, he does know. He does know. <laughs> Number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Susan Keolian, and I'm a French teacher at the Horace Greeley High School in Chappaqua, New York. <laughs> well, I guess you've all probably already pre-spent the money. I don't have to really figure out what the score is. You, you've got them right down the line. That means, of course, there are four times $250, or are a total of $1,000, which you get to divide. Also, on your way out, there's a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Arawak. Thank you very much for making the fun to our evening. Good night, and God bless you. Okay, panel, take a minute while we look at this brief film. It's our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Peter Wyden. My name is Peter Wyden. My name is Peter Wyden. Follow along with your copies of this one, if you will, panel. I, Peter Wyden, am the author of a recently published book entitled The Overweight Society. In it, I evaluate the facts and follies of some of the diets that the 79 million overweight Americans have either been on, are on, or will be on. Despite the fact that the ways and means of weight control still remain a medical mystery, diets have become a national pastime and bear such intriguing names as the champagne diet, the meat and mushroom diet, the amazing hypno diet, the zero calorie diet, and the North Pole slenderizing plan and melon berry diet. <laughs> My book also contains information on the idea that calories don't count and the plan that tells you how to diet if you have no character at all. Signed, Peter Wyden. <laughs> Panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Peter Wyden. Let's start this one with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Please. Thank you, bud. I'm delighted, Mr. Wyden, whoever you are, because I have no character at all. <laughs> Number three, which is the um, North Pole Thunderizing Plan and Melonberry Diet? Well, that's just a gimmick name for a very high-fat, high-protein diet. Thank you. Number two, what is the apostat? I'm afraid I've never heard of it. Number one, do you know what the apostat is? Oh, it's a coin name that uh, means the um, uh, proclivity for eating a great deal. You can uh. raise it or lower it. Uh, uh, among the quags. Thank you. Number three, do you believe that any of these faddish diets work permanently? No, I do not. Number two, do you believe in an ordinary balanced diet? Yes, indeed. With everything in it? Yes. Number one, do you believe that alcohol makes you fat? Uh, with most people, yes. And then you should limit it? Yes. Tom Poston. Number three, why does alcohol make you fat? <laughs> because unhappily it contains a lot of calories. And any other reason, number two? It's hard for the body to eliminate uh, that particular type of calorie. Uh, number one, any other reason why alcohol makes you fat? Well, I think it removes your inhibitions, and you're more likely to eat more. Well, that's uh, certainly a folk. Um, this is number three. Uh, number one was sore about that quacks in the apostat business. Why do you suppose he was so mad about it? Well, I am not his psychiatrist, and I wouldn't know. <laughs> You don't know what, you're not mad about apostat. That doesn't oh, bother no, you. Oh, no, I'm not a mad person at all. What does apostat mean to you, then, may I ask? It is the appetite regulating mechanism in the human body. Thank you. Hey, you can. Number one, what is the hay diet? No, I didn't get that. Hay. H A Y? Yes. H E Y. Well, I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> H A Y, we'll say. Well, I know of a hay diet for horses, but I don't know... <laughs> Number three, do you know what the hay diet is? 
No, I have read about it, uh, it in, uh, uh, at various times. I think it has some, some old quack diet of many, many years ago, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, but see, you don't think much of diets. They're all quack diets to you. Well, a great we many of them so are now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number two, who wrote calories don't count? Herman Toller. Thank you. Um, Number one, how many calories a day should you be on, say, me, to lose 10 pounds? In how long? A week. <laughs> In a week? No, say two weeks. Uh, don't do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're cute the way you are. <laughs> Arson skinny bean. Yes, number two. Uh, is there, tell me about the cause and cure of Dowager's hump. <laughs> can this be uh, helped by dieting? Most of our physical troubles can be helped by dieting. Oh, including that famous... All right, <laughs> number three, uh, the hated banana diet. Tell me about the banana diet. The banana diet yes. is just another one of these gimmick diets. That what do you eat on it, you know? Time. I beg your pardon? Do you remember what you eat on the banana diet? No, I've never been on it, thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> N number uh, uh, number one, how many calories in a kumquat? In a kumquat? A kumquat, an average size kumquat. <laughs> well, it isn't even on one of the lists that I read recently, so I, I, I don't know. Number one again. That's all we have time for. <laughs> so take your kumquats and mark your diets, if you will, please. Mark your ballots at once for the one you think is the real one. Voting without any consultation whatsoever. Just voting yeah. for number one. Number two, or number three. All marked swiftly. No, I'm not. Right. I'm not marked Tom, yet. for uh, whom did you vote this I voted time? for number two. I haven't marked it yet, but I voted. I just guessed that number two because the other guys were so busy knocking down. And no, nobody said, he didn't say anything, so I thought maybe. <laughs> Peggy, what is your choice? Well, I didn't vote for number two because he didn't know what the apostat was. I voted for number three because he looks very bleak when you mention diet, and I think that's sensible. Orson. No, number three looks like a man who likes the good things in life and would not want to preach to give up food to anyone. And also, he didn't know about the hated banana diet, which is a really disgusting. And number one gets my vote because he said that the reason you shouldn't drink alcohol is it makes you uninhibited and you eat more. And I've read this in almost every diet uh, thing I've ever seen, including the drinking man's diet. Kitty. I thought it's a number three because he knew about the apostat and also he was talking about psychiatry and I think you have to be a good psychiatrist in order to write a book on dieting because a lot of it depends on how you feel and think. Very well, this is the most widely split vote so far tonight. There's one for number one, one for number two, and two for number three. We'll ride with that one and find out now which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is Peter Wyden. Will the real Peter Wyden please? Stand up. Now, there's, there's a very definite reason why the ladies were the ones to succeed on this, because you see, Peter Wyden is executive director of the Ladies' Home Journal. So, natural affinity. Thank you for the promotion. I'm executive editor. <laughs> executive editor? Yes. I promoted you? To Start director. drawing your new salary tomorrow. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. I will. <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Louis O. Gross. I am president of Sleepy Hollow Craftsmen. We make portraits from photographs. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Number two, what is your name and what do you do? My name is Frank Petrick. I'm a pilot with United Airlines. <laughs> along with, I trust, having as good a time as we had. There were two incorrect votes. That's twice $250 for a total of $500 to divide. Also, when you weigh out, you will, of course, each receive a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Arrowax. Thank you for joining us. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs>
President Johnson's news conference on the Vietnam crisis will be broadcast live tomorrow afternoon at 4, Eastern Daylight Time on CBS. To Tell the Truth has been brought to you by Anison, the headache tablet to relieve pain. So relax tension, calm nerves. Anison. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program was recorded.